Wireless network is when two nodes send and receive data by utilizing methods like radio waves. This has become a popular technology because of ease and mobility of the wireless network. Critical advantage of wireless network includes helping to connect remote areas where wired technology is difficult to implement, and lower cost and wires and devices in the ease of installation compared to the complexity of wired networks. Different frequency ranges are used for various types of wireless technology, cell phone networks, satellite communications, drone technology, and so on. In this video, we'll be going over several wireless attacks that will be covered in the Security Plus 601 exam. First, we have Evil Twin. In this attack, the attacker creates rogue access point that impersonates a legitimate access point by spoofing its SSID and BSSID. The rogue access point will either send stronger signals than the legitimate AP or shut down the legitimate AP and replace it. Simply put, naming their hotspot Free Airport Wi-Fi so victims can click on it. Then we have rogue access point. This is a technique where the rogue access point is an illegitimate access point plugged into the network to create a bypass from outside into the legitimate network. It's not creating a new one like Evil Twin. A rogue access point is physically plugged into the actual legitimate network. The user assumes the rogue access point is legitimate and connects to it. Once a user is connected, the attacker is free to sniff packets and monitor activity. Next, we have blue snarfing. It's a technique in which attackers steal information from Bluetooth-enabled devices using Bluetooth vulnerabilities. While bluejacking is a technique for sending unauthorized messages to another Bluetooth device. Just think of it as a spam over Bluetooth. Then we have disassociation. This is a type of denial of service attack in which the attacker breaks the wireless connection between the victim device and the access point. The issue with IEEE 802.11 protocol is that all these management frames are sent in plain text. Attacker can collect this information by using Wi-Fi packets like error dump, and once attacker have all the information contained in the management frame, they can send this association packets to your device, which will not let you connect to your Wi-Fi. Next, we have jamming. Jamming attack uses signals to prevent devices from communicating with each other as well as with the server. There are multiple jamming attacks from pulse noise jammer to channel hopping jammer, but for the purpose of this exam, it's an attack that uses signals to prevent devices from communicating with each other. Then we have radio frequency identification attack. First, let's define what RFID is. It is a data communication technology that uses radio wave. It's basically an electronic tag that's embedded in something. The tag includes integrated circuit for storing and processing data, modulating and demodulating RF signals, and performing other specialized functions. It also includes an antenna for receiving and transmitting signals. You may have seen this integrated in some smart cards or some sort of mobile transport mechanisms. The security issue is that you can attack this by doing data capture and spoofing the reader and doing denial of service or even decryption of the communication. Then we have near field communication. This is commonly used when the communication is between the mobile device and a device that's nearby. You might have seen this in a payment system. The issue is that if the attacker has an antenna, they can capture and listen to the conversation. Here's an attack scenario. Here's an attack scenario. Attacker holds the NFC reader near the victim's card and relays the data over another communication channel to a second NFC reader placed in proximity to the original reader that will emulate the victim's card. RFID and NFC sounds the same but are different. RFID has long range, RFID is one-way communication compared to NFC, which is two-way, meaning NFC is slower but more secure. However, the main difference you need to know for the exam is that RFID is one-way and NFC is two-way communication. Lastly, we got the initialization factor, IV. An IV attack is an attack on wireless networks. An IV attack modifies the IV of an encrypted wireless packet during transmission. IVs are blocks of bits that are used to differentiate users on the wireless network. 
IVs eliminate the need for users to constantly re-authenticate with an access point and are therefore sent frequently. However, an authenticated user will reuse an IV because of the number of bits used is limited. The frequency of repetition depends on how much data is sent across the connection. If enough IVs are captured, it is possible to decipher the encryption key using a program such as Aircrack NG. Once an attacker learns the plain text of one packet, the attacker can compute the RC4 keystream generated by the IV used, which can then be used to decrypt all the packets that use the same IVs. Since there are only a small set of IVs, attackers can eventually build a decryption table to decrypt every packet sent over the wireless connection. So that's it for the wireless attacks in the Security Plus 601 exam.